In this chapter we're going to be talking about fluids and we'll start off talking about pressure. And to do this we want to imagine some gas in a container. So draw a container like this. This will be a closed container. And we'll imagine a gas in here. And by gas we mean something that is not a solid or a liquid. We mean something in a gaseous state. We're not talking about gas for your car. We're talking about a gas like air or oxygen or something like that. So imagine some gas molecules in here. Now we'll be talking about molecules and atoms more later on. But basically, and you probably already know, that everything is made up of atoms and atoms combine together to form molecules. So these little blue dots that I'm representing, or these little blue dots that I'm drawing, represent molecules of air. So each little blue dot might be uh, two oxygen atoms bonded together to make an oxygen molecule, or nitrogen atoms bonded to make a nitrogen molecule. But it's a gas, it's in a gaseous state. And all of these little molecules are zipping around inside here. They're all moving. And so these little vectors, these little arrows represent the motion. And they're flying around and they bounce off of each other and they bounce off the walls of the container. And they're constantly moving, flying all around and sometimes reaching very high speeds for very short distances before they run into something, run into another molecule or run into the walls of the container. Now this picture is not drawn to scale at all. In reality, the molecules are very, very tiny. You wouldn't even say microscopic because you can't even see them with a the microscope. They're incredibly tiny. And there are billions and billions and billions of them inside just a, a given ordinary sample of air, any, any kind of sample of gas. If you have an air tank, like a scuba diver might use, there are billions and billions and billions of molecules inside that tank. And they're all moving around. So the picture that I've drawn here just shows a few, just a representative sample. But to, to get an accurate mental picture of what's going on, you need to imagine billions of these molecules all moving around and all hammering away at the, at the sides of the container. They're all bouncing off the interior walls of the container. Well, they're bouncing around in the middle, striking each other. But the, all the ones around the edge, every time they strike the interior wall of the container, they exert a tiny little force. So right here you see this molecule ricocheting off the side or this one ricocheting off the bottom. Imagine billions of atoms doing that continuously. So what you have is this force from these atoms impacting the sides of the container and this force is spread out over an area. And that is what we call pressure. A force distributed over an area. And it's a steady pressure, it's evenly spread out, and it's constant. It's really made from billions and billions of tiny little individual forces, but they are so small, and there are so many of them, and they are hammering away so steadily that we can basically consider this force to be constant and spread out over that entire area. And that is what pressure is, a force distributed over an area. Now we have a formula for pressure, and the formula arises very naturally from the definition of pressure. If you understand that pressure is a force distributed over an area, then it makes sense that the formula would be this. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. And that should make sense. You can think of this as the amount of force acting on a given area. Or you could say it the way you would naturally read the fraction, force per area. How much force there is per amount of area. How much force on a given area. And this equation is often abbreviated like this. P equals F over A. And this obviously means the same thing as that. It's just easier and more succinct to write it using the variables rather than the entire words. And we'll do some examples with this formula.